Hello everyone and welcome to part two. Yay! Woo! Okay, okay. We're gonna we're gonna um we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. <laughs> okay, okay. The next morning when I awoke, Jay was already clean shaven and dressed for the day. He sat on the sofa in silence and sheepishly avoided looking in my direction. Woo. Huh? Well this is awkward. I wasn't sure what to say. Good morning. I hope you will be less of a jealous asshole today. He wasn't that bad. Oh, he it's cute though, it's okay. Let's go out there and try not to get arrested for murder, shall we? That suddenly meant when it meant any fences. Did you sleep well? I was away I was quite aware he hadn't. After our argument he had paced half the night. It was maddening, trying to sleep with him walking back and forth like that. No. Was that all? Did he no, did he have no intention of apologizing? I was still angry with him for the things that he said. But it's not like I enjoyed this either. I felt a tinge of guilt as I remember what happened after that. Oh, I had been able to bring myself to speak for him, to him all night. She needed to drown in my loneliness rather than be the first one to break. But then he sat down next to me in the bed. He thinks I'm asleep. Oh my god, I'm not asleep. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. He was there, close enough to touch. All I had to do was reach out to him. I did nothing more to tell me I was alright. That I knew he hadn't meant what he said. Would forgiving him without an apology be admitting defeat? I choose to play a trick on him instead. Gently, I grasped at his shirt sleeve and I felt him tense up. Shay. Oh my god. I mumbled his name again and again and he leaned down to listen. I couldn't bring myself to say it, but I, hope, I hoped he could hear in my voice. I forgive you. He put his head, head, head in his hand and put his head in his hand and he sat there with me for a bit longer. After all, he slowly removed his arm from my grasp and stood from the bed. He laid down on the sofa and then finally fell asleep. Aww. If I told you, would you be angry? Maybe that would make us even... If I could decide, Jay cleared his throat. Robin, I'm sorry. Ah! I shouldn't have said those things last night. It's just, I don't want anything to happen with you. Ah, to you. I was stressed. My heart skipped a beat, and suddenly the room and the room suddenly felt much warmer. Stressed, huh? Not jealous? Oh my god. He looked annoyed, but there was a tinge of red to his face as well. Stressed. Fine. You don't have to admit it. Yet. We sat there together in silence. That was a little, that was still a little awkward, but much less so than before. Then I remember something I wanted to ask. Jay, how old are you? <laughs> <laughs> we don't know that. <laughs> there was still a lot we didn't know about each other. I found myself wanting to learn more about him. Hmm? I'm like 22, I suppose. 22? That's much longer than I thought. Jay picked up my su surprise. He quirked his eyebrows and gave me a, a annoyed look. How old did you think I was? Just older than that. <laughs> thought it was odd about his phrasing as well. What do you mean, you suppose? He shrugged his shoulders. I don't really think about it that much. The way the way he said it made me a little sad. Did he perhaps not celebrate his birthday? How about you? What do you mean? You're age, idiot. How old are you? How oh, dare? Spare me the delicate lady act. I think you owe each other a few personal questions, wouldn't you agree? 24. That's not that bad. He, he put his head on the, his hand to his chin and looked away. Hmm, that explains it then. Huh? Seeing me blush, Jay let out a bark of a laugh. I'm only joking. I... I don't know what you're so embarrassed about. Jay thought isn't old. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, well. I know what I had been had been expecting him to say, but it wasn't that. I've never heard him laugh like that before. It's kind of cute. Is there anything anyone wait, 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 wait I passed that, okay. Um Is there anything else you wanted to drag out of me? Wait, wait, perhaps my bus size? His sly his sly smile maybe easily regret saying that. Would you tell me if I asked? <laughs> we gasp. I think I preferred it when you were sulking. Maybe this is a lack of sleep, but he seems sweeter than usual. Oh, Suddenly I felt a ominous pit in my stomach. I need to freshen up and change. Mind giving me some privacy? I was prepared for some witty remark, but Jay simply nodded and I made for the door. Let's alone in my room, I took a moment to collect myself. I'm getting too attached to him. Nope. N who cares? Nothing good had ever come out of that. He doesn't intend to stay with me. He's told me as much. If he made it to girls, Jay was going to leave, just like everyone everyone else does. What of Jay cut in my mind as I started getting dressed. Okay, you're dressed. We're we looking pretty though, like. After some time alone, I called Jay back into the cabin. And so, uh, so what do you intend to do about the injector detector? I've already told you what I think is the best course of action. I thought for a moment. Staying in the room wouldn't be, wouldn't that, wouldn't seem that strange under normal circumstances. If someone came looking for us, I could say I felt ill. But without that satisfy Ren? Suddenly he re realized we were avoiding him. On the other hand, leaving would mean continuing to interact with the other passengers. There would be more questions and more lies to keep track of. That's calm. That's calm. And more opportunities for Ren to look for suspicious behavior. Let him keep able to keep up keep up the charade for another 24 hours. I'm not the only one in danger either. I looked at Jay, who was patiently waiting for my answer. We'll stay in the cabin. Huh? 
I, I thought I was gonna give it like I thought I was gonna get a choice, but no, it's gonna stay in the cabin. You're right. It's the best way to keep from implicating ourselves further. Do you agree with me? Don't act so shocked. A looking clock is still right twice a day. You are bound to make a corrupt call eventually. I'm just so glad you're listening for once. I couldn't keep you in here without resorting to the force. I would not have to do that. Thanks, I guess. I believe he wondered if he would really do such a thing. He was cap he was clearly capable of keeping me here against my will. I said to protect you until we reach Gales, and I tend to keep my word. That is, uh, there, there it is, there it was again, until we reach Gales. Stay. Stay. Jay, if we make it through this, why don't you stay with me? It's a foreign country, and I'm bound to run into some trouble. It would be nice to have someone die for trust. Wouldn't you at least consider it? I'll give it some thought. Let's go! He <laughs> changed the subject. What about the case? I had thought about that too. Even if you don't intend to go on going anywhere, it's not safe to leave in the open. I'll have to hide it somehow. And I wonder if any central will be able to find it in here. That's why we won't have hide in that cabin. I've come up with a brilliant hiding space where no one would even think to look. Huh? You're enjoying this possibly life finding situation a little too much. All we need is a length of rope. I wonder, I wonder if there's a, some sort of storage area we could steal from. There's no need. I have some of my luggage. You just have that? You just have to He got up and began rummaging in one of the suitcases, pulling out a coil of hemp and rope. That's a little concerning. <laughs> what do you have that for? What do you think? Okay. <laughs> I decided to leave well enough alone and not question him any further. I tied one, uh, one, one end of the rope to the case and opened the cabin window. Huh? Huh? Sticking my head outside, I searched for something I could tie the other end to. I just hoped there was a handle of some sort just outside. After making, both sh making sure both nuts were secure, I had the case to Jay. Toss it up into the roof. Are you sure I'll stay? If we're lucky, I'll catch on to something. He leaned out the window and heaved the cape up case upwards. We heard a muffled thunk as it landed on top of the car. Jay gave a tug on the rope, making sure the case wouldn't easily slip back down. It held, so he retreated back into the cabin and closed the window. What did I tell you? Ingenious, wouldn't it, you say? That was quite clever. What if someone looks on the roof? I am a master thief, after all. Mm, I wonder, Master Thief, where you had all the riches you stole on your previous su successful heist. Yes, well, wealth isn't the only measure of success. Is that so? And here I thought was a, that was entirely the point of stealing. Perhaps you, could, you should leave it to us with professionals then. I suppose you're right. With jewelry safely hidden, Jay and I sell for what we had, we hoped was the rest of the trip. This is not going to go well. Sadly, that was not meant to be. Okay. A little while later, we had a knock on the cabin door. I made a stand up, but Jay blocked me with his arm and answered instead. A familiar grinning face greeted him. Morning! Or should I say afternoon? It was of course Dr. Ren. Perhaps it was my imagination, but he seemed a little worse for wear. I thought he could make a dark, faint dark circles forming under his eyes. What do you want? I had half expected this. Ren would be satisfied if his appointment dropped out. So have you intrusion. Did you two sleep well? I said, what do you want? Not a morning question then, I understand. Well, you see, my investigation had come to a rather abrupt halt. You don't say. <laughs> that made him brighten up a bit. Shocking, I know. My keepers wouldn't be satisfied unless I had left no stone unturned. So I'm here to ask for a bit of a favor. What sort of favor? I was hoping to you, the two of you would consent to a search. Jay looked ready to slam the door in the, the detective's face. I approached the two of them and placed a hand on Jay's arm, trying to will him to relax. I thought you didn't have the authority to search anyone without just cause. You're a good listener, Robin. You're right, I, can, I can't search your room against your will. That's why I'm asking for your consent. That's why I've been making way, my way through the passenger cars, asking everyone the same. So far, everyone else has agreed. It's made my job much easier. You're welcome to observe me. I'm also being monitored by a scribe here. Fuck. I just, he just to a man I hadn't noticed until then. It's a attendant. And he looks kind of... A train attendant was standing just behind him in the hallway. So I can assure you I won't be doing anything unscrupulous. You do, of course, have every right to say no. He didn't finish his statement, but I understood him regardless. If we refuse, it will make us all the more suspicious. The case is hidden at least. There shouldn't be much for him to find. Buffy, Buffy finds it. Buffy finds it. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. Okay, guys. Consent. <laughs> By all means, detective. Do, you see, do as you see fit. I opened the door wide for Ren and the attendant to come in. Go ahead, you won't find anything anyway. Jay gave me a nervous glance, but stood out the way. I appreciate you being so cooperative, my lady. Oh my god. Ren addressed me with a deep brow that reminded me of when we were children. I gave a playful response in return. Anything for you, detective? I thought I saw his 
face going a bit red as he's turned away to slice search. If I had any hopes that Ren would go easy on me, I was wrong. He very methodically worked his way through the room, checking even the most inconspicuous of hiding places. He even asked to go for our luggage, which I agree to. Isn't, isn't, isn't his, isn't Jay's luggage a bit suspicious though? Sorry if my things seemed a bit difficult for him though. Embarrassed to be handing in the lady's delicate perspective? None the slightest, it was about my job after all. But he, he hardly even looked as he rifled through them. He hastily stuffed everything back in my suitcase and moved on to Jay's. Oh, shit. You have a lot of menif rather menacing things in here. It's also strange. He is a bodyguard after all. All of it is legal. I'm sure it is. Oh my god. By the time he was done, Ren looked exhausted. Everything seems to be in order. Thank you again, Robin. You've been most helpful. There's just one thing. Huh? He waited for the attendant to step forward. Take it, ma'am. Pardon? <laughs> Fuck. Okay, we, we, got, we, got, we got to do the Ryan story again, didn't it? <laughs> Grab has been checking. Everyone took us ever go. Killing two birds with one stone, as you say. The ticket. When was there with his body, he knew what I said about the red spot on it. Would the ticket, uh, attendant examine the ticket more closely? Why did he need to see it at all? Ren must have sensed my hesitation. Unfortunately, this is this is something you can't refuse. When you boarded the train, you agreed to uh, play by his manufacturer's rules. Okay, just a moment, I'll go get it. I went to my bag and began slowly rummaging through it. The ticket was in my coat po pocket, but I wanted to buy some time to think. If I said I couldn't find it, what do you do? What happened to stowaways on trains? Did they get put on the brick? Did the trains have, have those? Perhaps I can make this, the splotch the least conspicuous thing about it. There's still some cold coffee in a cup in the, in the table next to me. There will be no trouble at all to accidentally spill it. Ren was sure to see it through such a cheap, cheap trick, but he wouldn't be able to do anything about it. Will he? Yeah, let's do it, let's do it. Also me, here he is. I pulled out the ticket from my pocket and made the decision. Oops! Ah! As I turned the ticket in hand, I knocked the coffee up over. Coffee spread across the table and stayed in a dark brown, covering it up the red. Oh no, I hope it's still readable. Readable? <laughs> I handed a sopping red ticket to the lieutenant. Um, right. He looking rather disgruntled. He had he held the ticket between two fingers and examined it. What inconvenient accident? <laughs> I hope you're alright. Ren gave me a look of mock concern, but his manning eyes betrayed him. Don't look at me like that. What other choice did I have? There wasn't much the lieutenant could glean from the sopping red paper, and so with a noise sigh, he thrust it back to me. I suppose that's it then. We'll be off now. Just a few more people to bother before we're done. The two of them startled down the hallway, but Ren spun on his heel. I almost forgot to say. I hope you've seen the lounge later, Robin. Oh, we're not. He caught me before I could look kind. We couldn't quite uh, uh, pop them among the other passages, you know. <laughs> when I think were asking about you when you didn't show up to lunch. Uh, right. I'm sick. <laughs> Surely when it deprived such an eager audience of your presence. And besides, you seemed so hungry for attention yesterday. The office might find it odd if you suddenly decided to you prefer the privacy of your cabin. He gave me a sly wink and disappeared down the car. Jay slammed the door shut. Persistent little prick isn't here. I sighed. He's already searched us. What does he plan on doing if we don't go? We should have the upper hand now. Yeah, Ren was so inc insistent that we show our faces. Do you know something we don't? Robin, something has been bothering me. What is it? Do you think Ren is really here investigating by himself? Please don't usually work alone. Not that you mention it, it did seem odd. Are you saying he has a partner hidden somewhere? Or do you think, is he lying about being a detective? I don't know, but something strange is going on. Okay, let's calm, let's calm. I sat there lost in thought. Jay, let's go to the lounge. Jay sighed heavily. How do you know that that would be your answer? He didn't possess though. As Jay got ready, I absolutely cleaned up the mess left by the detective. What sort of game are you playing, Ren? I was determined to find out. Let's go! Let's go! Oh, I have to remember all my lies. Okay, let's go. Jay and I chose to wait until a little after the diner to return to the lounge. When we entered the car, we were supposed to be greeted by a whole crowd of people. Ah, Robin, you decided to join the fun after all. Robin, so good to see you again. Fuck, everyone's here! And your companion as well. <laughs> so, oh my god. The elegant woman was there too, as were the men who bickered about rugs during, during dinner. Everyone gave me various gestures of acknowledgement. Attendant. Okay, with the exception of our large attendant, standing by himself in the large corner of the car, he has a scar. One person was suspicious by his absence though. He insisted I be here, but yeah, he's nowhere to be found. Good afternoon, everyone. Please have a seat. He motioned, he motioned to the empty sofa nearest him, which Jay and I oblig uh, obligingly took. I hope you're not intruding. Not at all, Robin. We were just talking about you, actually. Is that so? Only good things, I hope. Oh my god. Of course, dear. It seems you claim charmed a great many people in the short time you've been together. Let's share a with a personal bodyguard who boards the train out of the country. It's a start of a, it's like the start of a romance novel, yes. Oh fuck. Oh fuck. 
I don't think I'm as interesting as all that. Come now, Robin. There's no need to be modest. There's a fair number of interesting things about you that you had no qualms of sharing last about last night. This, this is a test, isn't it? Tell me, where is it from you again? That's a rather personal question. Is it? The rest of us seem to be discussing it just fine before you arrived. Of course, you don't have to answer if it makes you uncomfortable, Robin. Is this why you wanted me to come here, Ren? But if that's... If, but if that was his plan, why wasn't he here to egg them on? It's alright, Joe. As Fletcher said, I don't mind sharing. I'm from the capital, born and raised. That was a lie. Though I wasn't originally from the capital, I had stayed there long enough to be convincing. Same way I was actually from can lead to even more suspicious. After all, it's not every day that the daughter of the wealthiest man in town goes missing. At the capital, a fair few of us from, from there. Oh my god. It's nice to be the, the right- it's, it's nice to be right in the part of Zephyr, isn't it? You don't have to travel to board the train. Yes, Mr. Sand, I was just complaining about the trip from our home to in, in the south. And you handsome, where are you from? Same as Robin. Oh my god. I wonder if Jane was telling the truth or simply go, going along with my lie. You were saying you live in the capital too, right, Mr. Roberts? Yes, though I'm not originally from there. I moved for business. It's a veritable garden of industry. Okay, business. <laughs> I've been slashing yourself then, Fletcher. What is it you do? I will not say. My enterprise is still in its infancy. It's bad luck to count your codes before they hatched. Isn't it chickens? <laughs> Isn't the saying chickens? Actually, I've heard the saying in the cr is, is crows and instead of chickens and gales. The woman suddenly gasped, causing me to jump a little. Could it be you originally from Gales, Mr. Rhodes? That she did not look look too look pleased to be put on the spot. I spent some time in Gales, yes. You have no information on the matter. Okay, he's definitely suspicious. He's definitely suspicious. Suspicious. How interesting, Fletcher. Is it your business that takes you to Gale now? I mean, a smile cr uh, crossed Fletcher's lips. It looked like as he, as he wanted to laugh. Very astute, madame. But as, as I said, I don't want to risk to speak of such things at the moment. I have to say, I enjoyed your company last night, Robin. <laughs> I was afraid I wasn't seeing you again. That should definitely, definitely change the subject. You just move talker, I'll give him that. I do wonder, why don't you attend lunch or dinner? I was afraid I wasn't feeling well this morning. I thought I might have to spend the entire room in the cabin, but frankly, I started feeling myself more, in, myself in, more myself in the afternoon. I'm so glad, it would really have shame if I wouldn't go on with your sparkling conversation. Shit. Uh, I think I know what illness you're speaking of. We, we adults call it a hangover. Oh my god. Yes, a hangover. Thank you, Fletcher. Honestly, I was a little wary of living in my um, cabin as well. It's not very chilling to think there might be a criminal among us. Um, I'm sure you won't have to worry. The detective is here after all. I thought a murderer would try anything under the watchful eye of the police. The detective can't afford them to let them, let them get away either. Oh! If he does, he might not be a policeman for much longer. What's he talking about? What do you mean by that, Mr. Rose? The detective might lose his job? Would he be really be fired for such a single in incident? It seems like a good, honest person to me. Ooh. Most good, honest people aren't criminals. Who? Huh? 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 <laughs> he tried not to look too concerned, but what Fletcher was saying was troubling. Oh my, what crimes has he committed? Perhaps I said too much. Come on now, you can't just accuse a detective of being a criminal and not elaborate. Exactly. Fletcher heaved a small sigh. I suppose you're right. I have various sources inside the police department. The Tommy Ren is quite the handful. Ooh. He's rumored to have done, well, a whole laundry list of things, really. Tampering of evidence, breaking and entering, selling police information, what the hell? He is a very definition of crook. Oh, so he is a undercover. He is a police. Oh dear, he seems like such a nice man. Oh, he took a he took an identity. He is charismatic. He was a charismatic char charisma charismatic man. There's a difference. <laughs> they say he's a spy, an eye on the inside, serving a master hidden in the shadows. There's no concrete proof, of course, but the department is eager to get rid of, rid of him. I suspect that should he fail to catch his corporate, then his time as detective will be over. Thank God, okay, that's calm. We can deal with that. I thought that would happen. Well, there's no use for an eye who can't see, is there? I think, I think it's safe to assume that losing his job would be the least of his worries. Tell me, does that man sound like he can be trusted? Oh, he can't be trusted? Oh, what the fuck? The group was taken back by his revelation. Was Ren really capable of all that? Those are really rather heavy allegations. There are many rumors I have heard, which is why I'm hesitant to share them in the first place. I ask that you all take this as with a grain of salt. Thank you, okay. A spy, is true? But was this the reason of Ren's suspicious lack of partner? And why did Fletcher know all that? That doesn't sound like you at all. I didn't remind myself that the person I thought of I knew had, had been gone over for over a decade. But who are you now? Okay, well. <laughs> Not many people realize this, but the Gaelish rug making process is entirely different from the Zephyr process. Okay, yeah. For example, the conversation handed back to one of the mundane topics, but my mind was still on Ren. Why is it? 
If you say rug the word one, rug one more time, I shall sneak into your room tonight and smuggle you in one. Fine. The guy's map making process then. <laughs> Something tracker befalls you tonight, sir. At least you'll know who the detective should investigate first. I door open, drawing everyone's attention to the front of the car. Ah, speak of the devil. He's here, guys. Ren had arrived, following by the attendant who had been with him earlier. Oh, it seems I like to the party. It's good to see you all again. He, ch uh, he cheerfully greeted everyone, but the group gave him a rather lackluster reception. Detective, let's get to see you too. <laughs> Detective. Uh, only two of older women and Fletcher seemed unperturbed. Welcome back, Detective. It's been a long day for you, hasn't it? If Ren has noticed the less than a futuristic atmosphere, he was good at hiding it. As Ren and the others exchanged pleasantries, they pretended to approach Fletcher, leaning down to whisper something in his ear. Curious. The attendant retreated, leaving the car through the opposite exit. Can this search go, Ren? Can we finally put this murder mystery to bed? I've been able to cover quite a lot of information, actually. Ooh. Collecting all the pieces of the puzzle comes first and foremost. Ooh. <laughs> Does that mean you're close to finding the culprit? Yes, do tell. Are they really here on the train? Even when they think you're a spy. They can't help but like you. While I would love to share, the game isn't over yet. I would be pretty much sure to show my hand before all the cards have been dealt. You haven't folded yet, have you? That's quite telling, detective. Do you think so? Perhaps I'm bluffing. The mysterious aura is as intriguing as ever, Ren. You find me intriguing? How refreshing. I'm more accustomed to, become, become, to being called annoying. I suppose another two of my personality has one off of my colleagues. You are the only ones. I find you annoying as well. <laughs> Fletcher chuckled. It seems like your constant chatting is starting to wear down some of our company's patients, Ren. Oh my, not fond of the detective glasses? He was saying a lot, asking a lot of questions about Robin last night. Ooh, it wasn't just about. Perhaps that's the reason for Jay's prickly altitude. Intimidated, are we? What the? What? <laughs> not in the slightest. That's good, because intimidation was never my intention. Though, I am sorry you find me so abrasive. I had hoped you could become friend he could be friends. Jay gave Ren an incredulous look. Friends. <laughs> it can't be serious. It was pretty bold of him to suggest such a thing while attempting to impl impl implicate us in the murder. What a lovely rivalry. How exciting to have two men fighting over you, Miss Robin. Wait, no, I'm not. <laughs> huh? Oh, he's silent, he's silent. I laugh nervously. Inconvenient is more like it. If they keep this up, one of the other one or the other is likely to say something unnecessary. Scored Ren. Yeah. I think it's just a personality clash. The detective does seem to be intentionally identizing my bodyguard. He really has no reason to do so. Ren has caught my meaning and I sleeplessly looked away. I'm not sure how offering someone friendship is considered antagonizing, but if you insist, my apologies, Jay. I would never, I would never suggest such an awful thing again. <laughs> He's still being facetious. Facetious? Good. Why does it feel like I'm do dealing with two bickering children? Retro gave a hearty laugh and turned to me. I've tried authoritative, Robin. I should. I suspect you should make an excellent mother. What the hell? It was an instant enough comment, finally because to what I had been just thinking myself. But for some, for some reason, it made my skin crawl. That guy. He reminds me of the guy that we killed. That's why he's here. What the fuck? <laughs> but actually, this isn't the first time you said something really presumptuous to me. I'm beginning to wonder if you're doing it on purpose. Oh, it had occurred to me that motherhood might be a sore subject for some. Now that I think of it, you're, of course you're right. Please forgive me. There's tinge of amusement on his face. I'm gonna kill him. That's your first strike. I hope you're so forgiving a third time. Naturally. What the hell? My mind. Could it be that a free seat is fighting for attention? It certainly seemed that way that last night. Ooh, last night. It, well, I'm not fighting for anything. Oh, to be young again. We're putting on quite a show for the peanut calorie. Ladies, you're embarrassing me. Perhaps you can have talked about something else? The women laughed and assured me, me they meant no harm, and the conversation meant moved on. Okay. But Jay, Jay's, yeah, Jay. As the sky outside the train grew dark, a nimble's dwindle. The, the true older gentleman excused himself, but the conversation was still going strong. The topic had returned to the scarecrow's freeze, and the fall festival that was about to be held in Gales. I wasn't sure if I ran and I had assisted I returned here. We were talking about nothing of consequence, and the detective didn't even seem interested in interrogating me this time. And as he chatted, away, chatted happily with the other passengers, I couldn't help but wonder if the things Fletcher said were true. He knows I was involved in Sylvian's murder. If he wasn't in so much trouble as Fletcher implied, letting me go free would put him in serious danger. And yet, uh, sorry. I watched as Ren laughed at some drug I hadn't paid attention to. Just so what is it you're planning? Speaking the feast, I found out the most interesting book in my cabin. It details the origin myth of riches. Ooh. Oh my, a book about witchcraft while we're friend. Fine. And yes, I know. I've been reading it all morning. I simply could not put it down. 
You know, say that does sound intriguing. I'd love to hear about it. For a fraction of a second, I thought I, get, I saw Fletcher give Ren a curious look. Come on, another detective. I should I should think that would be very boring. Okay then. Is our company so interesting uh, interesting that you rather hear a story meant for children? I wonder what sort of life you lead that you makes you think a story about Riftcraft would be so boring, Fletcher, Fletcher. I think it sounds like fun. I know I love to hear it. Your tattoos, woman. It's like the star and the sun. Stun the star and the moon. I should pause for a moment before um, answering on it with, an air, and with an air of mild frustration. I suppose you make a fair point. The madam here, I suppose, seemed to find him entertaining. That's good enough for me. As long as everyone is on board, of course. Ren looked at Jay and I for an answer. It's not really the time. But I have to admit I was inter interested. Not to mention Ren was, always, was strangely insistent. I think I'd like to hear as well. I do love a good story. Ren gave me a tired, small, tired looking smile. I thought you might. Well, I think most of us are interested in hearing it. Yes, perhaps we should let the majority rule. Yes, well, the elegant women gave Fletcher a nervous look, but he nodded for her to continue. Once again, excited, the elegant women began telling the story. Uh huh. Oh, we're getting a whole backstory? Let's go. Let's, let's look at this. Okay. A long time ago, in a world without countries or kings, a beautiful maiden was said to, to wander an endless black forest. Her skin as, and hair as white as the moon, and eyes as red as rubies, she shone as though she was made for stars. She was loved and respected by all dozens of the woods, but for the maiden had a special gift. Like the others who walked this place, the maiden could not die. Oh, immortality. But was seen as a blessing was also a curse. Of course, of course. The maiden was forced to say goodbye to many friends as they passed on to the next life. This broke the maiden's heart. Every time she bid farewell, it felt as though another piece of her was shattered. One day, as the maiden remained the loss of another friend, a magpie approached her. Magpies are known for the trickery, and this one was no different. They coveted the maiden's power, and they conspired to steal it from her. Why are you so sad, my lady? Dearest Magpie, yet yeah, another of my beloved companions have left this world. So many have come and gone that I can hardly count them anymore. I fear that one day the rest of you will leave us as well, and only I will remain. To be left here for eternity, I can think of nothing worse. Hmm, that is a sad thought. My lady, you need to worry. We magpies are quite clever, you see. I believe I know how to prevent such a thing from happening. You do? Please tell me. The Magpie, ever quick on his feet, conceited a grand lie. Though she herself cannot leave the forest, we birds are capable of doing so. If my lady bestowed upon her, me one of her own eyes, well then she would see the line from two different, different perspectives. Even if we were to part, a shared vision would mean we could always be together. Even so, when I told two passed from this world, my lady could see on to the next. The maiden was trusting and kind, and the thought of the internal loneliness was frightening indeed. It seemed such a small place to pray. Very well, I shall grant your request. The magpie could not believe their luck. Oh my god. They watched in awe as the maiden plucked out her eye, leaving nothing but a gaping black hole where it had been. The maiden offered a glittering ruby orb to the magpie with, with trembling hands. Please accept this gift, so the two of us may be together forever. The magpie obliged. Taking it carefully in their beak, they swallowed the eye hole. The magpie felt a surge of energy, and the blood began the body and the body began to writhe and twist. First it had been being hateful, but it was over so quickly that the magpie could not remember. The magpie spoke, and when they did, it was a new human form. It seems our lady's powers have affected us in ways that we didn't anticipate. The magpie bowed deeply to the maiden. The gift is something truly priceless. We could never thank you enough. Yes, we feel different as well. After all these years, we did not think we were capable of such change. It feels exhilarating. What would our lady have us do now? You shall do precisely as you said we would. Fire away, little bird, and see the world for us. We have spent too long living in this woods, experiencing the same events over and over. Now we wish to see something new. What the hell? The magpie bowed again before shifting back to their prettiest form. They soared up into the sky and away from the sprawling back forest, taking the maiden's eyes with them. And thus, the first witch was born. Yo, that one's cool. Yo, <laughs> it continues on after that, but I've gone on quite long enough already. What does it have to do with everything? Anything? That's an interesting story, but I, just, I still don't see Ren's point. I I apologize for being so obtuse earlier. That was that was most entertaining. That represents us, right? Because we were like, we were like, oh yeah, people keep leaving me, blah blah blah, and then there was this guy who wants to take away my power, blah blah blah. <laughs> yeah, there was no need to apologize, Mr. Roberts. You're lucky she's being so reserved. I'm sure I'll be hearing about birds and the riches in the entire time we're in gales. I understand not, that not everyone shares my enthusiasm for such things. I quite enjoyed it. Thank you, madam. It was a lovely story. Yes, yeah, one of our favorites, in fact. You already knew the story. Don't worry, dear. It's always fun to hear it again. And you told it so well. The elegant women brush, blush. Another story of a mischievous thief. They seem to be quite common in fickle. 
Yes, but where Robin Hood was righteous and good, the magpie was not. Is that what you think, Fletcher? Of course, Robin Hood stole with the intention of giving back to the people. The magpie was only thinking of himself. Stealing such a precious treasure at the expense of others is an epi ep epitome of greed, wouldn't you say? That is, that is certainly an interesting way to look at it. You seem to be familiar with the story as well, Mr. Rhodes. I have heard of it, yes. It's a, ga a common ga Gaelish fable. You are Gaelish. I don't understand. Why did the magpie want her eye? What exactly did it do? But yes, it is rather vague. Ben gave a curious expression. Is this the story important somehow? I, I'm gonna remember it, bro. I'll follow it over. I don't know. I don't know. I can't say for certain I understand it either. I was, it was too fantastic to be believed anyway. I do understand it, kind of. I think it's what it's, I, I think I know what's trying to symbolize. Not to be expected. You only heard a small part of a much larger story. The first which is a monster meant to scale girlish children into behaving. It's no more than a fairy tale. Of course you would know. You grew up in girlish. Is this, what is it you wanted me to get out of this run? Now, Fletcher, don't be such a stick in mud. You said you were familiar with the story. Then you should also know that it's widely believed that the maiden's eye really existed. Is that so? How interesting. Ah, yes. The maiden's eye is said to be a ruby gemstone of unparalleled beauty. A gemstone? Fletcher scowled. I'm aware. But if such a stone ever existed, it has been lost to history. Many have searched for it, and it's never been found. Perhaps you're right, though it's a lovely idea. A stone capable of bringing back the dead. The, this was no coincidence. Jay realized this as well. He put a, his hand to his chin, deep in thought. Was there anything like that among the things he stole? What an intriguing mystery. I had no idea. I must simply, I simply must read more, more of that book tonight. That just seemed quite frustrated with the topic of conversation. Non-existent magical stones aside, I don't know where that book came from. There was nothing like that in my room, own room. Not that he mentioned it. I don't remember seeing any books in our room either. Yeah, another mystery. Though I suspect the reason behind this one is rather ordinary. I assume it was study material left accidentally by one of the staff. I'm sure they would want, would want to be well read on the subject of girls. You have a really convenient life for that, bro. You have an answer for everything, but you detective. I'm simply a problem solver. Oh, wow. Flesh looked like he was, had more to say about that. But he was quickly distracted as another attendant had entered the car. Ooh. Hi. He rushed to Fletcher's side, panting as though he had run the length of the train. Everyone, uh, everyone watched as he leaned down and whispered in Fletcher's ear, just as the other attendant had. Fletcher clenched his door and, jaw and scowled, clearly upset by whatever the man had said. Pardon me, everyone. There's something I must check out of. Oh, he's gone. Fletcher stood and made for the door. The attendant just came through. What's going on here? Is something wrong, Mr. Rhodes? Apparently, some passengers have decided they are above the rules here. Switch thinking is very dangerous. But don't worry, it's nothing I can handle. This is a small space, or they must be preserved, or you can quickly evolve into chaos. Flies! Lord of the Flies! Something like that. <laughs> I urge the rest of you to stay put for the time being, as a precaution. The attendant attendant had, uh, had just arrived. Fitters, keep an eye on everyone. Grouse, with me. Whoa. The last attendant who had been stationed in the corner of the car all evening. Obediently went to Fletcher's side. Fletcher paused at the door, turning around to address Ren. Detective, I believe we had an argument about how you could conduct yourself while on my train. I hope I can trust you not to go back on your word. Your train? Ooh. Of course not, Fletcher. I'll never do such a thing. Your train? I suppose there's no hiding it anymore. I might as well come clean. This train is a passion project of mine. My company built it. It's because of me, Miss Robin, that your trip was even more possible. What the fuck? My mind raced as the pieces fell into place. I wasn't aware. My apologies. Apologies weren't necessary. I hadn't intended to reveal that fact. Now, if you excuse me. Oh my god, he's, he's he built the train! Oh my god. And with that, he disappeared through the doorway. My, I hope everything's alright. I can't believe Mr. Rose is the owner of the whirlwind. Why would you think why would you think he kept the secret? Perhaps he wanted to mingle with the pressures that came with such things. It's hard to know who your real things are when someone wants something from you. I'm sure that'll be a mark in your favour, Robin. He must get tired of women chasing him for his assets alone. The others were gossiping were talking about gospel again, but I wasn't paying them any attention. My eyes went red, and I could see the gears turning behind them. <laughs> Fletcher had all but explicitly told him to behave himself. What is it that he doesn't want you to do? It seems I'll be stuck here for a while. Perhaps you should play a game? Mafia, let's play Mafia. What do you have in mind, Detective? He smacked on her three fingers. It's called Free Lies. Oh my god, no. It's a gayless chicken game. Have you heard of it? Oh my god, I'm gonna get caught out. Okay. Huh? Huh? <laughs> As a matter of fact, I have. When I had and Ren and I had played this game the very last time I saw I saw him. It wasn't Gaelish at all. He had made it up himself. If I recall, detective, this game is meant to be played with by three people. 
We're including over half our number. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about any, anyone else, but that's quite right with me. Yes, I think just watching will be entertaining enough. I'll set the first game out well. It'll be easier to learn that way. Do you want to play dear? No. <laughs> there you have it. There's no problem if you J and I play first. I don't want J will be fun. You should play with us. So very well. Aww. Robin, why don't you explain the rules for J? Of course. If you have us, we'll pass around the coin. Take in turns saying something about ourselves. It can either be a lie or truth. If we lie and it goes unnoticed, when the coin passes to the next po person, you get a point. But before that, the other two have an opportunity to call you out. If they do and they're right, you get a strike and they get a point. If they're wrong, they get a strike. Three strikes and you win. Three points and you win. Three strikes and you lose. Okay, got it. Accidentally said. Thank you, Robin. I did not get it. <laughs> if this is a game of trust, you have to take each other's words and that we're being honest here. This wasn't how we played it the first time, though. When Renan invented this game, he had, a he had a different goal in mind. Now we need a coin. He rummaged through his pockets. Oh, I have one. Doran took a coin from a person and handed to Ren. It's gonna shiver. They say it has special properties. Oh my god. How appropriate. Does anyone mind if I go first? By all means, detective. He smiled and held, held the coin in front of him. Uh huh. I, Ren, I'm 29 years old. That wasn't right. He's not that much older than me. He should be 26. Do I intend. Do he. Do he did he intend for me to point that out? I'm not gonna call him out because I will not know that. <laughs> Does he look 29? You know, he has a stubble. Okay, don't call him out. It wasn't an obvious lie. One thing you know I would notice, but there was something about the way he worded it. The boy I knew had a different name. He might not be 29, but perhaps Ren was. He had remained silent and Jill followed my lead. No objections? Alright then. I mean, it's your turn, Robin. That's according to me. My detective, you look good for your age. Yes, I have to agree. You have a very youthful face. Oh, um, thank you. I thought about what to say. I know what game we're playing, but it's not three lies. I decided to wait and see what things were going. I prefer coffee over tea. Okay. <laughs> Neither Jay nor Ren objected, so I passed on the coin. Ah, oh, I prefer tea though. I prefer tea. I lied. <laughs> I don't know what Jay will say. He, f uh, he thought for a moment before speaking. I have at least one sibling. <laughs> at least one. <laughs> what an achieving way to word that. You certainly piqued my interest. I can't tell if you're being sarcastic or not. That's part of my charm, don't you think? She has at least one sibling, that's... No, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know! That's the truth. It was the truth. I had met someone before who called Jay his brother. I call him out on it, and neither did the director Ren. Jay passed on the coin, and once again it was Ren's turn. I, Ren, had never met anyone on this train before yesterday. Again, he phrased it strangely. Well, he's met me, but... He's never met anyone on this train. He has! He has! The, 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 the guy! The guy! Um, the guy! And what's his name? The purple head guy! The Fletcher! You've met Fletcher before, I swear! Call him out. I say you're lying, detective. He gave me a sly grin. Uh, how would you know that, Robin? It's called intuition. I, s I think you're lying as well. Well, at least one of you has some good instincts. I am lying. Woo! Let's go! That's one strike for me. He passed on the coin. He's met someone on the train before. Fletcher! Fletcher! If I understood correctly, correctly, he did not mean me. Was Ren trying to pass me information on the guys of a game? Then it has to be... Well, I was supposed to mention, but there's a time penalty, Robin. Fuck. My apologies, I haven't played in a while. It was my turn, so I thought over my options. I said that Ren was trying to tell me some of his answers. As much as like it, I should play my turn's faith. The safest bet was trying to tell us the truth, tell our truth and to try and trip one of them up. Truth. This is the truth I've been engaged twice. I have been the lady in the light that I'm watching. I've been given dance lessons. I've given dance lessons before. That wasn't too much of a stretch. I was convinced this didn't count as a lie. They look conflicted, but Ren's book up. I think you're lying. A businesswoman and a teacher? Yeah, they no, uh, just aren't enough hours in a day. I was never fun of my own dance lessons. Something Ren was required very off. He's falling for my trap. Perhaps I don't look at the type, but it's true. Let's ask Jay. <laughs> She's alright, I suppose. You told Jay how to dance? That's so romantic! Huh? I, so, I bet you have two left feet, don't you, glasses? No, no, I think Rachel, he's quite good. It'll be interesting contrast, don't you think? Please stop talking. That's your second strike, isn't it, detective? Let's go! You're right, but I won't be beaten to another. You will. For a tight with my turn, I passed the coin on to Jay. He closed his eyes and four. He seemed to have a hard time of coming up with something. He's usually not, he's not usually keen on talking about himself. I've never had a pet. I just don't see the point. This is like a pick hat person. 
You know, he's not, he's not, oh, he's lying. I wasn't sure why, but that struck me as false. I think you're lying, Jay. I agree. You wouldn't know. No, I was suspecting Robin would. Was she right? Yes, I was lying. Let's go! <laughs> you had a pet? What kind? A cat. I'm fond of them. I told you, cat person. I know, I know that, I know that because look at her, look, 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 a cat is it? Well, I tell you, I know he had a soft side deeper than deeper down. You have such a sense for these things. <laughs> imagine Jay, imagine Jay taking care of a cat was rather cute. What was her name? I don't have to tell you, that's on the rules. What do you mean? <laughs> what you mean is that you don't want to say? Perhaps it's too embarrassing. Is it a time penalty? Ah, yes, you're right. Hmm. Ren looked at the coin thoughtfully. I, Ren, after lied to my superior. Huh? The lieutenant gave him a curious glance. If Ren noticed, he didn't react. His expression was more serious than he had been previously. There's something important about the statement. But your superior. I can afford. I can afford being called out on this. But that means I have to. <sighs> Those are rumors. Rumors might be um. The rumors might be like uh confirmed if I call them out. Let's call them out. Come on, I believe you're lying right now, detective. I also think you're lying. Ah, you caught me. It's actually quite difficult to lie to my superior. But I found other ways to protect my secrets. Huh? Detective? Ren ignored him. I know that. I believe you're running, Robin. Let's go! <laughs> Thank you, detective. Good show, Robin. Yeah, I was... Yes, I was right to bet on you. You were taking bets! <laughs> Though I, I suppose I couldn't have participated since I was playing. Question, congratulations, Robin. That game seemed quite fun. I've always fought for them. So, being like convincingly deceptive must take a lot of practice. It's something not like a game for everyone. You don't hold your own, Jay. You're a more difficult appointment than you'd think! I agree. You're it's surprisingly strategic. Surprisingly. Shit. What's that? Well, shit. <laughs> the car took shook slightly as we heard a muffled con commotion from another train. What was that? The lieutenant gave Ren a conflicted look. Go on, I'll be fine here. He nodded and quickly left the car in the direction of noise. The group sat in tense silence for a moment. Something strange was happening. Once the attendant was well and truly gone, Ren looked as though he was about to say something. But he was cut off by one of the older women. Oh my, I do hope Fletcher can handle himself. But in the meantime, how about a spot of fun? I agree. Now that our baby sister ha has left, the, 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 the deep voice woman drew back her sleeve, revealing a silver watch. I couldn't see his face, but it began, raving, began ticking rhythm quickly. Why didn't we hear that before? Huh? Don't. <gasps> She's a terrorist! Oh, oh! Ren and I and the bored woman looking mind both drew to her attention as though the woman had drawn their weapon. Huh? Ren stopped and let his look of con concern turned to confusion. Wait, what was I doing? The other man seemed to forget why he stood up as well. Oh, she's not a terrorist, she's a witch. <laughs> I thought it was a bomb! I thought it was a bomb! <laughs> What's going on, honey? Ugh. Oh. Jay, are you alright? Jay had his hand halfway into his jacket, but he, but he didn't seem to be able to sit up anymore. Huh? What do you do? I turned to face the woman, then I noticed something strange. She's a rage! I told you! She's a rage! I told you! I told you! I told you! Her eyes were glowing. That what? I felt uncomfortable. Where was I again? What the Wait! Yo! Yo! The room began to spin and my knees hit the floor hard. I was trapped in my body, unable to stop the rave unco unconsciousness that was rolling over me. No, don't fall asleep. As I lay face down on the floor, willing myself to stay awake, the woman continued to talk. It's already starting. This never happened so fast before. They need to stop. If you turn now, it's fine. See, those ones are already gone. Click then. Let's get this one first. You're right, he did have a gun. <gasps> the, vo the voices got further and further away as I continued to fade out. Then, then I was gone. What? Wait, 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 wait. The last thing I felt was a, was a sensation of floating. Somehow, I was drifting, drifting along down the length of the train. Perhaps, perhaps that was only a dream. Whoa. 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 Sounds of merriment faded into the background as, as I crept, crept, quietly crept down the opponent hallway. He always comes this way when he meets with clients. Ugh, why does this place have to be big? So look. Back in time? Yo, 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 I he didn't care. He had hinted before, before that he knew I was in as innocent as he claimed. I suppose that makes it easier for you, doesn't it? No one will look for me if I go missing. A man who 
enjoyed the company of beautiful young women, all of whom mysteriously appeared. Sylvian's reputation preceded him. In fact, it was the reason I approached him in the first place. Someone as far as bedroom to living room deserved to have everything taken away from him. I peered into the dim room, dim room and a voice made behind me made me jump. Hi, Shay. <laughs> you seem to be lost again, Robin. Shall I escort you back to the party? Shay, you saw me. Shay was one of Sullivan's men. A particularly shot one of that. Wherever I went, he followed. It was rather claustrophobic back there. I, I stepped out to catch my breath. Is that so? How does wondering help you catch your breath? Well, this place was like more or less mage like, I might have found the restroom by now. Allow me to show you the way then. Perhaps you wouldn't commit it to memory, so I wouldn't have to keep finding you in places you shouldn't be. Always so helpful, Shay. Thank you. I took his arm and he led me down the hallway. Let's go! After wasting some time in the restroom, I ex ex exited to find out he was still waiting. Oh, are you worried about me? Just making sure you can find your way back. Shall we turn to Boru? There was no escaping him now. He likely wouldn't let leave me alone for the rest of the night. Sigh. No, I much, I much prefer this hallway and your company to that pack of wolves. Suit so yourself. She was the only one of the Sullivan's men I liked. He was certainly the only one who spoke to me as if I was a person. Although he didn't disobey him, he didn't seem to, as devoted to Sullivan as the others. I was thankful that I had to leave one of them following me. Eh. I was thankful that if I had to have one of them following me around, it was him. In fact, I got the distinct impression he enjoyed my company too. It's an incredible stroke of luck, one I need to take advantage of. Are you sure you want to stay here with me? You'll be in there drinking and dancing with the rest of them. Though I suppose you're not allowed to drink in the job, are you? I don't know how to dance. As for drinking, I got that covered. He pulled a flask from his jacket and showed me? <laughs> I think this scandalized glass. <gasps> Shay, how terrible of you. Is Sullivan new? I'll take it. I'll take it if you. I'll take it you don't want any then. He made his stirred flask away. Let's not be so hasty. How about a deal? I think I know where this is going. You don't tell Sullivan where you found me. I won't tell, you, tell him you're drinking on job. I held my hand up for the flask. How's that? He rolled his eyes and handed it over. I took a swig and passed it back. There, the deal is sealed. Now give me your hands. What? Why? You say you don't know how to dance, right? I'll show you. Right now? Do you have uh, Do you have something better to do? I don't want to go back to the party and you really interrupted my other plans. He simply held out his hand, arms and like, uh, guided them into position. Here, it's not like this. I went through some of the steps. Are we boring dancing? That's so cute. He was much more clumsy than I thought he would be. I couldn't resist giving him a hard time. He's not very good at this. I told you. I thought he might quit, but surprisingly he continued to try. Great music and chatter echoed from the ballroom as the two of us danced in the darkened hallway. He felt a bit surreal, as though it was some strange dream. He didn't seem to, he didn't seem to mind as I let myself fall a little further into his arms. Shay. A daring mood came over me. Can I tell you a secret? Is that you're a terrible dancer? Because I've already noticed. It's so rude. Ah, oh, that wasn't it. Go on then. I changed my mind. You'll probably just tell me on to me, on me, Sullivan. I won't. You can tell me. Promise? Why are we school children? Have it your way. I guess you don't want to know my secret after all. He gave an exas exasperated sigh. It was such a tease. Fine, I promise. Cross my heart and everything. Cross my heart and hope to die. He was probably on my arms. This was something like I kept myself for years. Was I, why was I so, so desperate for him to know? I want to tell you my real name. Your real name? Ah! Am I inter interrupting something? Shay quickly let go of me and turned on the man who spoke. Nothing important. Robin insisted, me, insisted on showing me how to dance. Out here, alone in the hallway? Dominic. Uh, okay. Dominic gave us a both knowing grin. I had seen him around here before, but never spoke to him directly. Something about him always seemed off. Now fairly on edge, Shay didn't immediately give an answer. I decided to uh, try and smooth things over. My apologies. I've had a, much, a bit much to drink, and the boy was quite overwhelming. Dominic sm smirked. Don't really, I'm bored. I'm not with Dominic Sylvian. Oh my god. I have no obligation to report the things you two might be doing in the dark. My brother here, on the other hand. Brother! Brother? Is there something you need, to, you need from me, Dom? Not, not in this exact moment, but I do need to speak with you later. Why don't you finish your lesson work first? I'll be waiting. As quickly as he arrived, Dominic disappeared down the hallway. Damn it. I have to explain. While his placefulness was gone, replaced by the core version of something he showed it to everyone else. <sighs> he said he went to a Sullivan. Dominic said he had to show it to your brother. Didn't she trust him? It's not Sullivan I'm worried about. This is your fault. Why can't you just do it as you're told? Oh. But this angry prickly shame was more like how he was when you first met. That's not fair. You can't hide from me if I can't hide from you. And you're blameless, is that it? You quite you seem quite content with your arms around me. Ooh. Ooh, excuse me for trying to take comfort in the friend. I'm not your friend, Robin, I'm your keeper. I don't know, I don't know why you're trying to come a shit, but one of these times you're gonna get caught by someone other than me. 
that happens, then what? Will I disappear like the rest of them? He frowned and looked away. So you knew. You knew and you're really still willing to work for him. I don't have a choice. Those strange emotions behind his voice that I haven't heard before. Yes, you do. You could leave. Don't you think I've tried? You could help me. You could discover. Listen to me. Oh my god. He gripped me by my shoulders and forced me to look into his eyes. If you keep this up, you're going to get hurt and there won't be anything I can do about it. <gasps> oh, I can take care of myself. And he flung his, I flung his hands off me and stood my ground. Oh my god. Robin. It's Rosalind. My name is Rosalind Gardener. That's so cute. That's such a cute name. You don't have to tell me. I don't break promises to my friends. I'm going back to the party. Stay out here if you're so desperate to be alone. I stormed off, leaving Shay behind. Rosalind. Oh. Whoa. Whoa, it's a bit dirty. <laughs> the bit is a bit dirty in here. <laughs> when I came to, I found myself slouched over uh, on the couch in a dimly lit cabin. I realized it was my room, but it was in the same state I left it in. Oh, the flowers are tipped over. Wait, let me, let me show you this. The flowers are tipped over, the like, stuff fall over, the flowers, the glasses, and what the, what the hell did you do to my room? Drawers and cabinets stood open, and the things from my luggage had been thrown out about how positively. There was no doubt about it. Someone had been looking for this case. Ah, you're awake. Huh? The riches! They're looking for the ruby! But the what is it called? What is it called? Maiden's eye. Especially who was standing near the door approached me when, I was no when he noticed I was looking unconscious. What happened? Where are Jerry Wren? I don't know yet, but I had my men looking for them. But this was the only one able to grab you when the chaos started. That's right, we've been together in the lounge when something had happened. I can't even remember exactly. It was like some of the pieces were missing. I knew it, well, oh, eh. All I knew was that I felt strange and, lo and I lost consciousness. Had I been even drug? What's going on? Did you do this? I just said you're distressed, considering the current situation. But no, I did not destroy your room. The fact, I reason, the reason I left was to stop the thing that did. He rushed into a dark corner where he could just make a silhouette of something hunched over the ground. It didn't look human. Was it some kind of animal? Some of the other passengers have become aware of a delicate matter, private matter. Something that was meant to stay between me and my ex-business partner. A matter that involves you and your so-called so -called bodyguard, Miss Robin. Oh. And not even with my warning, some of the others tried to capitalize my, on my absence. Well, I apologize. Our time, our kind tend to be prone to, to our vices. You're rich too. We're rich too. <laughs> but many of our group, that vice is greed. You're quite lucky I had the foresight to send bitters back. What are you talking about? What do you mean? I see I haven't figured it out yet. Allow me to explain. Some of our passages are different from the others. Riches. The train was made to serve a very special, very si si secret clientele. I had thought perhaps that you were one of us. I should have said that. I should have said understood, man. I should have said that. I'm glad to see that's not the case. That is such a that is a terrible this is a terrible customer. bear. It also means they have no use for the item that you stole from Bertram Sullivan. Oh shit. I played dumb. Bertram Sullivan, the man who's murdered and the detective is invest investigating. I've never even met him. You may have mistaken me for uh, mistaken have me mistaken for someone else. He chuckled. You could deny it all you like, but I will find out. None of this is on you, Robin. It's your bodyguard who's guilty, right? Huh? I suspect he ha I suspect he hasn't been entirely truthful with you, so let me fill you in. He and his family work for people like us. They are well known in the circles. Okay, so he's a rich? I've heard rumors that his current contract involves Sullivan's death and the safe transport of the goods you store to Gales. It also involves turning one of Sullivan's other possessions over the contract holder. You, my dear. Oh, wait, I'm, I'm a... I'm a possession? Yo! <laughs> That's not... But I hesitated. Not true? Come on now. Are you that naive? Why do you think he's so concerned for your safety? Did he perhaps tell you that the two of you would live happily together in Gales? Yo, that's not... No, he hadn't. In fact, he has said many times that we were part once we reached our destination. But Jay only, uh, only killed Sullivan to protect me, right? Or was that just a convenient excuse? I don't care. Do you, do you know what the penalty for failure of contract is, Robin? Death, I assume? Quite right. So you could, you could see why he would go so far for you. Even risking his life for yours. He has no alternative. He's put you in grave danger to protect himself, but I can help you. At a price, right? You're a clever one. Among the things you took was a silver box. I just want it back. I thought I thought I remember something like what he described, but if you have any idea where it is, please tell me. The Fletcher think I was stupid. I will be manipulated so easily. Jay wasn't aware of whatever was going on here. I was sure of it. He, he didn't even want to bring the case of Jules with us. Yet yeah, Fletcher expected me to believe that I was entire goal. Not to mention, he would never have agreed to trade me over like I was some object. There's no way I, there's no way I misread his feelings. I trust him with my life. I don't believe a word you said. 
I don't ask for yourself a box. I've never seen anything like it. You should check your facts. I'm not the person you're looking for. So you want to be difficult? Fine. Oh my god. He reached into, this, into his pocket and drew something out, silver, so out something silver. Yep. Yep, you're definitely, you're definitely. Okay, this has to do with the story, right? It was small and thin, with an engraved motto, mot motif of a bird of some sort. A pocket watch. You're going to regret this, Robin. Oh my days, can you not drug me, please? <laughs> Part three. Okay, okay, we're going, we're gonna save him. We're gonna save him. My bad, guys. But like, we gotta have to, we have to. See you on next episode where we, we sign up what happens. Uh, hopefully we're not like dead or anything. Yeah, bye bye. Oh, whoops.